Hello again. I'm bringing another TVT. And on the top left, we got Hellbringer as the Red Terran. And as the blue, that's me, as Aurelius. I've been moving uh, pretty well up in the Civil League. Uh, I've stopped facing gold and uh, platinum players all the time and actually facing silver players now. This guy was level 39, I think. But that means he has played pretty much uh, compared to me. I'm, I'm not in the best mood, if we put it that way. So I'm usually like playing for one win a day, then I'm like satisfied. I'm not striving to become top player in the world, so. Uh, that's probably why I'm not playing this game too much and I think it's fun to play at a moderate rate uh, overextending a game makes it too serious and takes way too much fun of it though there's a lot of learning process in this game but you know I take it nice and easy S day by day play you know, try to play consistently, you know, like, you play a lot for like a month or so, then you stop playing completely the game for like three months and then do the same thing over and over. But try to play a little bit from time to day, time, when, when you feel like it. So, he's making a proxy here and my scout have entered his base now and uh, he doesn't see any barracks, so I probably think with these double supply depots that he's gonna double racks or something like that, which he is. So at this point I hope I'll make a bunker soon and produce more units quickly before he rushes up my ramp with 10 marines or so. Nice. The thing is, when he got double racks he can just pump out uh, double the production I have, but if I have a bunker and would block the ramp, I could just send my uh, SCVs to repair it if he would sh choose to charge up the ramp. But he's uh, making a bunker here, so I'm not sure he will go all in, really. Making an orbital, it's always nice. You have a fast mule and it pretty much uh, picks up the money you use to build this place. There we have the mule. But I'm pretty focused on scouting here, I believe. Wonder what I saw. I saw... Yeah, I saw the Rex. So I know he's outside of my base preparing for an attack. Let's check income. Well, we're even in Harvester, so I mean, he haven't really lost anything. Except one Marine. Though, what he gains from this attack, it's him making me panic, making my expansion delayed, and now he's just retreating, so... I guess it's uh, confusion tactics. And now he's making a bunker here, and... I guess if I would be able to scout that out, it would make me even more scared. Though he could easily have to <laughs> just ram past uh, the bunker if he would have noticed and go back onto this mineral line and mess my base up. Since I don't have enough marines to beat him. Though he got enough I got enough SCVs to aid my marines, but it, the casualties would probably be pretty big. And yeah, he could just focus down my marines then. Oh, I got a reaper. So my thought is, if he's out there somewhere, why not go back into his mineral line? Playing around a little bit with his jump physics. 
They're pretty cool, just jumping up and down cliffs. I remember, I think they had some kind of grenade against buildings, but I think it's removed now. But they got um, combat drugs. <laughs> they got uh, health regeneration now, which are called combat drugs. So these guys are um, drugged up, ready for battle. And here it ends poorly. Yes. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna go. No. I don't think so. I I will. You know if if they got their base secured with units and you have reapers, it's no point in going in there. Either you add them to your army or just have them for scouting purposes. I mean they are fast movers and you can check here quick. Like oh, it's it looks okay here. And then just jump out to the other side of the map. Works with a SCV or Marine too. So it's nice. I don't think there's a speed upgrade for these bad boys anymore. So I'm, I'm still in my base and he's starting his expansion here. So he's ahead at this point. Here I'm going to siege up and destroy these bunkers, nice and easy. Though I'm blocking my marines, trying to fight their way <laughs> in front of the tank. So now I'm just gonna slowly remove this threat. Though this is just a trap. And this is pretty nice, uh, I thought this was like uh, this shell he's shooting, I thought it would hit on a main target then deal equal amounts of damage to the enemies and um, apparently I think since three of them are very hurt and one is not I think since they disbanded the bunker at the same time I think the shell might be hit this guy and since these guys were very very close maybe al almost on top of this guy uh, then they almost took equal damage so, I think that's nice. Instead of it would be calculated like on this unit and an area effect damage on the other units around, but it actually calculates where it, the shell lands. If you get the hang of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm always. Being, taking precaution against drops. I mean, everyone builds a starport, so there's always risk for f drops. And who knows? Maybe they'll like go right in here, and oh, uh, there's a turret there. Or if they're crazy, going banshees, which I might be doing since I'm building a tech lab. Let's check here. So I'm producing uh, upgrades. I'm pretty consistent with that. I'm. I like to keep my upgrades in check, so you, so you won't forget them and st stay on one one or zero all game long, and then you, you're like, oh shit, I forgot to upgrade all game, and my units are a lot weaker than my enemy's armies, even though I got a bigger one. So always try to just. Oh, uh, I got my upgrades on the way, and when. The one ones are almost finished. Try to it at least make one armory so you can keep making two two. If you go in these marine builds <laughs> I'm using, I like siege tanks, so I usually try to have them as support. And I find, think these widow mines are quite handy. Here's my reaper. Not really scouting that much, but. At least he's alive, not wasted on enemies. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have these as defensive. Scanning my base, so he noticed I'm not in my main anymore. And there is my expansion, so he knows I'm out. Let's check our armies, our active forces. It's pretty even according to this 
Oh, it's actually to the very main supply. I thought it would be like an army value. There's no such tab anymore, it seems. Oh wait, army supply. This is nice. And here we can see workers. So if you're good at math, you can do minus workers to this main to figure out the exact number of the army supply or just watch look at these. You can't do this in game though, so you can't really count your how much work you got. Though I think to help that out, uh, yeah his army is bigger, but like 20 supply or so, that's pretty much, but still you can count your workers by like, imagine like Two gases, so that's like six, and usually it's 24, I think, if it's a full base. So, if I got two bases full, it's like uh, six plus six plus 24 plus 24, or oh yes, multiply that with two. But you get the hang of it, so it will be like 44, whatever they wait, 48, then uh, 50. <sighs> that was tough. Oh, I, I'm moving with my old banshees. And they got invisibility. I, I miss everything that's going on in the game. And he's making a raven. So that's interesting. I think it's mainly due to the window mines. Because I remember I played in Bronze League before. For about a year ago. And I've been a little bit on and off ever since I started. Well, two years ago. I started first time in 2011 but the widow mines are invisible and if I dig out around everywhere it's you know easy for him to spot them and deal with them plus I mean at these low levels it's easy for people to just bunch up their units and seeker missiles are big AOEs that will blow them up sky high And who knows, maybe I will go Seeker Missiles and do that, and he can just throw down a um, point defense drone, which are actually very good. And you can use them for harass with energy, which are cheap. So I got my third base up and running, and he's just starting on his third base, so I guess I catched up pretty well. I haven't upgraded in into anything yet. So, it's a good thing to think about, to just have one in your army, I mean, it never hurts to have it, especially if your enemy is going like, DTs or something like that. I think I... Oh, there's my Banshees, I thought I missed them or something like that, but I haven't. Though it's fa a failure, because he got turrets everywhere and you can't really do anything with Banshees. If he got turrets. He got only one turret here though, but I think don't think it would have been much of a difference, especially since he got his army here. This is pretty interesting. You see this big rock here, what he have done here is to have shot them down, so you know I've tried to scout with this marine, but he kept walking into their front like this marine did. But it's actually a block here, which I didn't notice until the second or third marine or so. I'm throwing him down a lot of scans, it sounds like. So I'm gonna try to do a drop. I think the plan was to go in with my main army at the same time. So here I'm dropping it. Let's see how fast it takes, long it takes for him to react. There he moves in. So now I'm gonna try to move in here fast. Not that fast, now it happens. Though he got a nice spread with his tanks, so he will easily clean this up, especially since his units arrive. And uh, I'm losing all of my tanks and all of my units, it's a really tragedy. Though my Widow Mine does their work and blew half of his anime, uh, army away, and his units are very hurt. So I have pre to, pre to prepare for a counter. W nicely done, moving back my units. I haven't really blown down my box. But um, I didn't know about that, so... 
And I didn't think his army was disturbed because I never saw those Wither Mines go off. So, I'm so now I'm hesitating, trying to build up, sacrificing this base. Gonna pull off my SCVs. You know, trying to make sure I'll be able to get down there and be clean this up without losing my the few units I have to his army. So I'm cleaning this up nice and safe here. Even kill me off the retreating units, that's always a plus. Uh, having my Reaper on this Selnaga Tower will help. But the thing is, with this map, the Selnaga Tower isn't really in the middle of the map, so if he moves with his army here, I won't really notice anything. But it's good to keep in check of the side expansion, just move your scout down here from time to time to check. Always good to see if they're ninja expanding or not. I mean, if they have a base here, f mining all game, then it would be like having another base here that doesn't matter. It's, he gets so much advantage of ha having a base that you don't really pay attention to. Not that uh, we've <laughs> really managed to do anything to one another. Well, he did to me, but I moved my orbital from the main to down here. It's a, you know, faster solution to get back into it. So I'm uh, transferring SCVs and I'm very bad with my gas. As you can see, he destroyed my gas here and pr probably moved all of my workers from this gas. My main doesn't have any workers on the gas, so they're all <laughs> moving from the base to this command center, which is bad. So I'm moving back up, trying to set up a new uh, quarantine force want to keep them in their base so they want to move out to expand so though my income in the minerals are extremely high so I can just force out thousands of, of marines but you know having a siege tank like this lined up is a slaughterhouse to move up especially if they face an army like this Though I have two free and upgrades since I'm consistent, though not in mech that much. Not sure if I mentioned, but uh, these medivacs and tanks share the same armor upgrade, so that's nice. He's moving out to expand up here, and uh, there's the sensor tower. Uh, I think it's uh, underused, especially in low player games. I mean, it's nice to see invisible stuff moving to your base, or hidden attacks like a dropship. Or, you know, maybe an army mobilizing down here. So what is up right now? I'm trying to fix my gas, it seems like. I, I'm back in economy. I, I must have forgotten to... Oh, he's dropping mules to like force my tanks to shoot my own units, but I think I was lucky there because I just at that very time uh, unseached my units, so they didn't shoot to waste the mules. So now I'm trying to, you know, have my tanks lined up for the um, ramp, so if he move down I would immediately shoot his units when they're clumped up at max. Here's the drop ships. No, I don't know about that expansion yet. Ah, uh, that this is why it's good to have sensor tower. He can see all of this. Looks pretty cool actually. <laughs> Explanation points. <laughs> and here goes the drop ships. The third one here. So I noticed this place now, so I could just drop if I pay attention. No. Maybe I'm just gonna do that with... No, it's... Okay. Yes, it does. There it goes. He's losing that expansion. I'm forcing him to stay in his bases. So I'm moving in here with my army. A drop. You know, forcing him to defend. And if he's gonna do that, I'm gonna... 
stay down here because I learned last time from the cans. So he's just feeling like, yeah, I have to go out and do something. But he's just on one, two, while I'm on two, three. So my army is stronger, and I got siege support. But it seems to end out pretty evenly. But I uh, still got ahead on that fight. Maybe it's because of those Marauders. So, he never really turned around to go for this attack. And I think that might have cost him dearly, because now, it's, yeah, he gave up. But th that's the thi beautiful thing about making a multi-pronged attack. He had un one undefended uh, base here. So I just put a few marines on that. Though, uh, in total, three dropships full of marines, that's a big part of your army. If, especially if it's like marines. Uh, it's a small unit, but in a big amount they're pretty dangerous. Though susceptible to big splashes of damage. And, yeah, I caught up pretty well on the economy front. And I think I got ahead since I had map control. And yeah, I was going to expand again behind this attack. And I had good production, I, I believe. So lots of reactors, two factories. Uh, maybe I can see. No, I can't see my hotkeys. Anyways. And, well, <laughs> these <laughs> Widomites, he, he might have might have fallen for the trick again if he would have countered. So, yeah, map control and keeping your economy up, it's always great. And upgrades, it's key to these big fights. So, imagine your units, the more units you have, and the more increased damage. Maybe, I'm not sure how much one upgrade increases but imagine if it's plus two in damage and it goes to all marines I had and if we back up to here maybe a bit later so imagine all of these people plus two multiple their amounts so I have 84 marines plus two that's a lot of extra damage for an entire army. So that's why upgrades are so important. Though, uh, I think, you know, this is good to train at lower leagues, but as you progress to higher, it will be a lot more important to um, divide your armies into, well, you know, make key choices, because if you take too much on a drop, and lose it, then you will have a, a lot of uh, less of a, a main army. But luckily I had my siege tanks here, and Wither Mines if he proceeded this far, which I don't think, because I think I moved my marines about here somewhere. Uh, the Wither Mines are pretty short in range. But anyways, it's simple things to think about really. Macro is key in low leagues, I noticed that because my micro sucks, I mean I just dropped them here, uh, put on, um, what's it called, steam, then I moved immediately back to my main army and tried to, you know, uh, prevent something like this from happening. I think it's, I hope it has been helpful for some of you, and uh, well, good luck and have fun in this game.